Hello everyone, it's Kelly here. <laughs> nice to have you. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, welcome. Glad to have you. If you've been before and you're back again, thank you very much for being so um, supportive and for returning. <laughs> um, I am excited today because I live in Sydney, Australia, and we have been in lockdown um, because of COVID-19 for quite some weeks now. It's got to be at least two or three months, um, a long time. So what that has meant is we've been under stay-at-home orders. So unless we have essential work, we are supposed to stay home um, and work from home if we can, etc., etc. So um, because of that, only shops that are deemed essential, um, <laughs> like supermarkets and chemists and things like that, have been able to remain open during that time. So a lot of shops have been closed over this lockdown. They are all now beginning to open back up again. And for me, the exciting part about that is it means that secondhand stores, thrift stores, as some people call them, are reopening um, or charity stores opening up. And that's exciting news for me because it means book shopping. <laughs> um, and there is a charity store near me. Um, the particular one that I went to was uh, St. Vincent de Paul. We call them uh, Vinnies here in Australia. Um, they're a Catholic charity and they just, um, you donate goods, you can go there, you can buy things that other people have donated. And this particular one that I went to today, that's not too far away from where I live, um, is one that is really good for books. So I was super excited to go and have a browse in a shop. <laughs> it's been weird not being able to do that for some time because I do like a good browse. And of course, when you're at a charity shop, it's super easy to pick up lots of bargains to find things that you were not expecting. Um, and for this particular one that I went to today that has so many amazing books, such a huge range of books, I was able to pick up quite a few um, things that I had either had my eye on. I also picked up some books that I had as um, as ebooks that I would be keen to read again as a physical book. So that has been exciting uh, to have those those things that I had sort of had my eye on. But as well as that, I think this is the bit that I missed about browsing in stores is that you get that serendipity of finding something. Um, it's sort of like a little treasure hunt, trying to find um, little treasures, things that you were not expecting to find um, that are going to bring joy to your life. <laughs> so I'm hoping that these five books that I'm going to show you today are books that are going to bring me joy. But to see that, what I thought I might do in this video is preview them. So I'm going to show you what I've acquired and then I'm going to read the first line of the book to you. I'm going to read the first chapter of the book silently because that would be a tedious video uh, <laughs> for you to listen to me reading aloud five first chapters of five different books. However, what my my plan with this is, is to sort of get a feel for the book to see if I've found like a little gem or if it's something that I might sort of either pass back on again um, or that I might put on my shelf for a little while because it's not the right time or the right vibe um, for me now. Uh, anything that I love though, I think I'm going to pop onto my TBR for November. Um, so I will talk at more length um, about anything that I add to my TBR in my next TBR video, which will be coming soon. All right, so let me show you the books that I got. Um, I've got The Water Dancer by Ta Nehisi Coates. Apologies if I've pronounced that completely wrong. Um, looking at the back of the book. So, sorry, I should say, when I was in um, the Vinnies, I was looking at um, just the blurb on the back of the book to decide whether it sounded like something that I'd be interested in. And this sounded interesting, This the, the premise of this book. Um, it says, Hiram Walker is a man with a secret and a war to win, a war for the right to life, to family, to freedom. Born into bondage on a Virginia plantation, he is also born gifted with a mysterious power that he won't discover until he is almost a man, when he risks everything for a chance to escape. 
one fateful decision will carry him away from his makeshift plantation family and into the heart of the underground war on slavery. So it sounds like a super interesting plot. And the other thing um, that sort of made me go, oh, okay, is the um, the reviews on the back of this book. So one is from Oprah Winfrey saying it's one of the best books she's ever read in her life. And we all know she's a big reader. So that's saying something. Um, there's also one here from Toni Morrison, um, who is saying that this author uh, fills the intellectual void that uh, plagued her after James Baldwin died. So that's quite a, like, that's a mighty recommendation. So this one seemed interesting to me. Uh, so that's book number one. The next book that I got, which has the most gorgeous cover, I think I've ever seen on a book, um, it just looks so cozy, <laughs> um, is called The Diary of a Bookseller. And it's by Sean Bithell or Bithell. Um, and this is nonfiction, so it's a memoir about a bookseller. And he talks about um, some of the interesting customers that he gets in the in the bookshop um, and, you know, just sort of the ins and outs of owning a bookshop, the ups and downs um, and, you know, where he acquired books from, etc., etc. So this sounds um, super interesting to me as well. Oh, I should say I should tell you how much I got these for. So this one I got for two dollars. This one I got for three dollars. Then we've got a fantasy, and I have to admit I don't often pick up fantasy. Um, so I don't know what it was about this one that made me um, pick it up. It, it definitely has a gorgeous cover, so it could have been in part that. But anyway, it's called The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, and um, it, I got this one for $3 as well. Um, and it sort of seems like a sort of quite standard um, uh, fantasy plot line from, from the back. Uh, so we've got a, a character called Jude and she has some sisters. Their parents are murdered in front of them right at the beginning of the, of the book, I assume. Um, and the assassin abducts all of the girls and takes them, there's th sorry, three girls, and takes them to the world of fairy, um, where Jude is installed into the royal court. Um, so she's a mortal and she's in a fairy, a fairy court. Uh, so it's sort of, that's kind of seems like that's how it's going to begin. Um, so I, I'm assuming that chapter one of this book is going to be, um, pretty full on <laughs> uh oh maybe it's not going to be maybe it's going to be just the the uh establishing the norm before they get abducted so anyway I don't know what what it was that made me pick this book up but I have it now so we'll see um because fantasy is not normally well this type of fantasy is not normally my thing so we'll see uh the next one is The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott and this was nominated for um, a prize here in Australia called, if I can remember the name of the prize, that would be good. I'll put it on the screen if I, <laughs> if I can't think of it. Um, but this one, uh, I got for $3. I actually already own a copy of this, but, um, when I ordered it, so I ordered it brand new and when it came, I hadn't realized that it was, it was a smaller format of a paperback. So I, for three dollars, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's get this one," because um, I really prefer to read these um, larger format paperbacks if I can. Uh, so I'm, I am already kind of excited for this one. But essentially, um, the plot of this one is: Ren lives alone on the remote frontier of a country devastated by a coup. High on the for forested slopes, she survives by hunting and trading and forgetting. But when a young soldier comes to the mountains in search of a local myth, Ren is in inexorably drawn drawn into her impossible mission. As their lives entwine, unravel and erupt, as myths merge with reality, both Ren and the soldier are forced to confront what they regret, what they love and what they fear. So this is um, Robbie Arnott's second novel. Sorry, we've got, <laughs> we've got company. Um, 
so it's his second novel. I haven't read anything from uh, Robbie Arnott yet, but I am definitely keen to. Um, I've heard lots of really good things about this book um, and people who have absolutely loved it. So I am keen to get to it, but I have not read anything of it. So um, it'll be interesting to read the first chapter of that one. And the final one that I picked up um, also for $3 was The Paris Library by Janet Skeslian Charles. Uh, I have I have this on my TBR, I'm fairly confident. I didn't check that before I started recording, perhaps I should have. Um, but this one is set in Paris in 1939 and also Montana in 1983. So we've got a dual t uh, timeline here. Um, so we've got uh, in Paris in 1939, Odile uh, is obsessed with books and her new job at the American pa Library in Paris with its thriving community of students, writers and book lovers is a dream come true. And then, of course, war is declared. Um, and then in Montana in 1983, Lily is a lonely teenage, -er, I'm assuming that meant to say, not just a lonely teenage, uh, desperate to escape small town Montana. She grows close to her neighbour, Odile. So Odile obviously survives the war um, and is there in Montana and where Lily is uncovering the secrets of Odile and presumably her life in Paris. So I reckon, why don't we start with, with that one, the most recent. I'm going to read you the first line, then I'm going to read the first chapter and then I'll come back to you with my thoughts as to whether I'm going to be popping this onto my TBR for November. Alrighty. So we've got, it starts with a photograph there of the American Library in Paris. Mm. So obviously this was a real place. Okay, it says chapter one, Odile. Paris, February 1939. Numbers floated round my head like stars. Okay, so that one was interesting. Um, so in the first chapter, we meet a young Odile. Um, she's preparing to go for a job interview at the American Library. American Library in Paris, um, although she is not American herself, she's a Parisian. Um, but yeah, so you can tell that she loves the library and that she's very much into books and she can, she has memorized the Dewey Decimal System, etc, etc. So she's definitely a keen reader. Um, would, would I put it directly onto my TBR? I'm not sure. I think it's one of those books that would grow on you as you kind of got involved with the character, um, you know, and and uh, the the action sort of began. So I don't think I'm going to put this one onto my TBR just yet. Uh, sorry, my my immediate TBR, I should say. It's on my TBR. I will read this. Um, I'm not going to give it away, but I'm not going to read it immediately either. All right, next one. <laughs> the Rain Heron. All right, let's give this one a go. Ooh, that's interesting. Part zero. A farmer lived, but not well. Hmm. Intriguing. Intriguing, definitely. Um, so... This one, um, the first part here, we've got a farmer um, who is unsuccessful on her farm. And she, yeah, although she had worked really hard um, on the farm, things were not um, working. And then there was a, a, a huge storm um, and it was you know, a very destructive storm that destroyed homes, crops, everything in its path. Um, and after the storm, uh, she was the only person unaccounted for. Uh, and 
then she was seen um, sort of in the branches of, of a tree. Um, and then the, the, so there are, a, it's a group of little group of boys in a little boat, um, f going through the debris. Um, and there she is draped over this tree. They're not sure whether she's dead or just unconscious. Um, but then, uh, I'll read this bit to you. It says that more curious than this was what they saw next, a huge heron, the colour of rain, suddenly emerging from the flood in a fast, steep flight, leaving not even a ripple on the water beneath it. With a languid flap of its wings, it came to rest in the crown of the oak, standing over the unlucky farmer as if on guard. Um, and then it says, this water-risen heron was unlike any other they had seen before, any other heron, any other living creature. Its blue-grey feathers were so pale, they claimed later, that they could see straight through the bird. Its body was pierced by strands of dusky light and the tree was clearly visible directly behind its sharp, moist beak. Um, so it's, it's intriguing. Like, I, I want to know what's going on. I think this is a potential to go directly onto the November TBR. Yeah, I reckon so. I reckon so. All right, it's going on. Right, next one. <laughs> This is fun. Okay, so this is the Cruel Prince. Uh, this is the fantasy one that I'm a little bit unsure about. So let's have a look. Oh, okay. So we've got a map. I do like a nice map in a fantasy. Okay. Oh, beautiful. All right, so it looks like we've got book one with a quote um, for from Robert Graves' I'd Love to Be a Fairy's Child, which is, um, I presume, a children's poem. I'm not familiar with it. Um, and then we go into the prologue. So let me read the prologue and get back to you. So it starts like this. On a drowsy Sunday afternoon, a man in a long dark coat hesitated in front of a house on a tree-lined street. Meh. All right, let's see if it gets uh, more interesting as we go on. So the story is told from the perspective of Jude, who is one of the twins, and she is um, uh, she has a twin sister called Taryn, and an older sister, Vivian, and um, Vivian is a little bit different. Um, to them, she's got, uh, so she's got, a, you know, something about her eyes and she's also got lightly furred points of her ears. Um, and although this is not strange to Jude, um, it is something that is mentioned and that is because it turns out she is the daughter of the um the assassin uh so it turns out that the assassin um is i presume someone from the fairy world um and he had so their mother was his wife um, he believed that she and Vivian were dead, um, but uh, I don't know what, it doesn't say what the circumstances were. Perhaps they um, made it appear <laughs> that, they, that they were dead. Um, uh, but she escaped back to the human world um, and remarried. And so uh, Jude is a mortal, so she is... Um, the, the so the mother remar remarried or had another partner and and had the twins um so yeah that's basically what that's all happens in chapter one so that is not a spoiler um <laughs> uh and then he then takes them back to the fairy world um so yeah i mean it sounds interesting i don't know that i'm gonna jump to read it straight away but 
yeah. Um, also, it sort of seemed like it might be, I wasn't aware of this, but this could be like a YA or a, you know, for younger people. I'm not sure. I might have to do a bit of research uh, just from uh, the way that it was written. However, it could just be because it's a child that's the protagonist. So that, that might be it. All right. So that one's not going to go directly onto the TBR. Um, but I... Yeah, we'll come back. I'm I'm interested enough to want to know um, what has happened. All right, let's have a look at the next one. So this is The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bithell or Bithell. Um, and, oh, somebody has dog-eared the corners. Mm. Okay, let's have a look. Um, okay, so we start with a photograph of the actual bookshop. And we begin in February. Would I like to be a bookseller de matier? On the whole, in spite of my employer's kindness to me and some happy days I spent in the shop, no. Oh, sorry, that is a quote from George Orwell. <laughs> uh, Bookshop Memories um, from 1936. All right. Orwell's reluctance to commit to bookselling is understandable. Okay, let's see how we go. All right, well, this one was interesting. Like, I'm uh, quite compelled. Um, it's not what I was expecting. It's definitely um, a diary. So it's just uh, something that he, the author, um, kept uh, once he'd been told one too many times that, you know, the customers coming into the shop and, and the wack weird, wacky things that they did um, were would, would be good in a book. So he started kind of keeping a diary just to kind of keep track of everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I read a little bit more than the first bit. So there's the February part um, is kind of like the introduction. And then I read the first, um, the first diary entry. So um, essentially it's talking about some of the you know, the things that happen in the bookshop, the customer, some of the like regular customers and, you know, the odd customer that comes in that they don't know. Um, and also just sort of interesting bits of information about what it's like, um, you know, what the business is like. And, um, you know, there's a section in here talking about Amazon already and, and um, how that has impacted small bookshops and so on. So, yeah, I'm quite interested to read this. Uh, We'll see how we go. I may put this on to November um, because it is non-fiction November. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to participate in that. Um, but, yeah, if I do, then this might be the one because I this is quite interesting and it's something um, I am interested in learning more about. Uh, all right, one more to go. Excuse me, Xanthi. <laughs> okay, so the last one is The Water Dancer. Uh, let's have a look at this one. And I could only have seen her there on the stone bridge, a dancer wreathed in ghostly blue, because that was the way they would have taken her back when I was young, back when the Virginia earth was still red as brick and red with life. And though there were other bridges spanning the river goose, they would have bound her and brought her across this one, because this was the bridge that fed into the turnpike that twisted its way through the green hills and down the valley before bending in one direction and that direction was south. That is a very long first sentence. <laughs> Let's see how we go. All right, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, it's a, certainly a very um, eventful first chapter. Um, so we meet our uh, protagonist. I don't think we hear the name, but the name is on the back. It's um, Hiram. And he uh, essentially is drowning. Um, he has a brother called Maynard, who is a bit of a, a fool, essentially, and someone who um, is constantly just doing ridiculous things. Um, we all good. We all good. <laughs> uh, someone who's constantly just doing ridiculous things, and um, he 
uh, Hiram is a is sort of like his helper for some reason. I'm I'm not clear as to why. I'm guessing that you find out more as you go along. Um, but they are both drowning in the river. Um, and he is sort of beginning to see people from his past and, and reflect on his past life and things that have happened to him. So that's essentially what's happening um, in that chapter. And then it looks like chapter two begins um, him, him telling his story. Um, I don't know that I, I don't know if I want to put that straight onto my TBR. I don't know if it's the right time. I think it's the kind of seems like the kind of book you need to be in the right headspace for um, to to sort of get the most out of. So I might leave that one for now. But a positive result overall, I think, um, because every single one of these books is one that I that seems interesting to me. I mean, obviously, reading the back cover of the books in the store uh, did give me a little bit of an indication of that, but you don't really know till you start, do you? So I'm really pleased um, that all of these books are ones that I feel keen on keeping um, and are ones that I can see myself reading it at one point or another. In terms of which ones I would like to um, put onto my TBR straight away for November, I think um, the Robbie Arnott uh, Rain Heron, I think, is one that I'm going to pop on pretty quickly. Um, and then I think, depending on whether I decide, ooh, <laughs> depending on whether I decide to do um, uh, nonfiction November, if I do, then I think I might get into this diary of a bookseller um, because that will definitely be an interesting nonfiction read. All right, well, that's it for today. Um, tell me about these books. If you, have you read any of them? Is there one that you would recommend um, that I, you know, just keep reading a little bit more um, to see if it's, you know, if it's for me? Um, are there any here that you think are just not worth my time? Um, particularly, I want to know about this one. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm really unsure about that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about these books uh, down in the comments below and I'd be really keen to get your opinions um, on them. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and I will see you on the next one. Bye.